Hey everybody, it's your old noise pal, Grand Hires of Hard Tech Studios, and I am back with yet another unboxing from Sweetwater, meaning we get free candy, and a new drum machine. What drum machine is it? Well, you probably read the title, so you probably, whoops, no, but it's probably going to be a pretty brutal drum machine. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, we're going to be unboxing the Arturia Drum Brute. And I am very excited because it's another analog drum machine with lots and lots of potential. And uh, there we go. I think I no, I, I didn't. I didn't break it. Cool. So let's put this up. Oh, so excited! So excited! I'm already seeing bright colors. Lots of bright colors and my receipt, perfectly hidden away from your eyes. So thank you, Sweetwater. Got some bubble wrapping. I don't really care for this type of bubble wrapping. But that's what we get. We get free candy. Of course, they put peppermints in it. Ew. Gross. And an Arturia drum brute drum synthesizer upside down. All right. So here we are with the drum brute, the Arturia drum brute. Let me go ahead and do some adjusting with the camera. There we go. So we can get it a little closer. Now, let's see. Opening is on the other side. Teasing me, man. I'll just teasing me. Pull this little flap. Very typical way to open gear these days. Don't open it by the handle. That's kind of like a briefcase handle. Oh, and look at that. Oh, they put it right. That is already beautiful. All right, let's get it out of the plastic. First of all, we have a power supply with multiple types of uh, power plugs for different regions and such. So cool, that, that's that's a nice extra. Put that aside. And um, looks like we gotta put in our own, yeah. Gotta put in the American one, so. Here is a power supply with kinda like a nub. And gently put that right there. Let's see. And where's our 110 volt? Plug. I think that's it right there. 110 volt. Well, I can only assume. Let's just go ahead and plug that in right side up. So we can use this piece of gear. Maybe it goes in like this. There we go. All right. So power supply ready. Now let's get this big bad boy out. Oh, feels kind of weighty. Very weighty. And it's not just a styrofoam either. It's foam, whatever you want to call it. Here we have a little quick start thing. I guess there's not much of a uh, manual, not complaining. And of course we got the stuff that you're not supposed to eat. Do not eat. But this, oh, I'm going to have a big dinner of this. Look at that. Let's go ahead and get this box out of the way. Oh, make a mess in here. As always, now let's uh, do some final camera adjustment. Okay, right, right, right here. I'm gonna scooch this down just a wee bit. Okay, tighten her up. Yeah, we're running off a of mic stand, buddy. Oh, very, very nice. Now my initial feel of it, it it's weighty. It's good and weighty. The uh, case, I do, it is some kind of metal. The uh, pads right here, these pads are nice kind of gummy pads for drumming, where the sequence pads are kind of squishy. Same thing with these type of pads. All the pads are squishy except for the drum pads, which are nice and gummy. That's cool. Uh, let's... You can feel these knobs. Typical uh, Arturia knobs. Nice and very smooth. I would like a little bit more resistance in them. But uh, they feel good. Oh, that feels really nice. Nice, lots of indentations in it. Same thing with the swing and the rate. No, the rate is a little smoother. Almost feels like there's some indentations, but I'm not sure. It, maybe it's just a little rough. Either way, we got the 
filters. I guess that one should go like that, and that one should go like that. We got the master volume. Oh, uh, the... I can't tell if that's a real wood side panel. I think it is. I think it is real wood side panels. Let's uh, take a look at the back here. Flip it around. Let's take a look at the bottom real quick. You got five rubber feet and lots of screws. Now for the back, we have got headphone out, uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone out, headphone level, mix out, all the individual outs for the drums, uh, sync out, MIDI in and out, sync in and out, MIDI in and out, USB and power supply, and a little thing to keep your stuff from falling off, and the power switch. So yeah. All right. So I'm getting really excited. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered up, plugged in and all. I'm gonna go ahead and un bread tie this power supply and put it aside. I'm going to go ahead and unfold this cable. Sometimes easier said than done. Oh god, this one's really bad. Okay, there we go. And where did I say the... okay, I see it. Has some really nice clear lettering on where everything is in the back so you can just kind of go by feel kind of all right and now we're gonna plug it in excuse me kind of straighten it up for y'all so you don't get the full experience now we got a cable right here and let's see, mix output. This one right there. Because it's already ready already. Now, let's do it. First time powering this sucker on in Hard Tech Studios. Slick. Very slick. Oh. Oh. So uh, let's start cranking some volume up, okay? Oh, wait. That. This kick drum right here that I'm using as a test is down. Let's bring it to like uh, 3 o'clock. Huh, not getting any signal here. Let's try the uh, snare. Oh, I see. I see. There we go. Really nice feeling pads. I really great layout so far I'm really enjoying this so uh, let's hunt down the play button here and let's see if we got a uh, preset kinda going Let's uh, go over here and give it some more volume real quick. There we go. That's a little better, huh?
very, very beefy sounds going on so far. Let's see, uh, how do we do this? We just hit this. There we go. Let's uh, bring some more sounds in, huh? That doesn't look like they're going to play that one. Let's see what else are they playing here? Some toms. happens right here. Snap level. What about this clap here? Ah, very clicky. Now, how do we mute things? Here we go. Got the roller. See what happens when we do this. <laughs> that gets a little too wild, doesn't it? We'll crank all that down. Bring in just a little bit of swing. Bring it to the next pattern. And just for the heck of it, let's try out this metronome. That's, that's pretty weird right there. Huh. Well, maybe there's something to figure out about that metronome, because that's a little weird. Bring it up to some higher speeds. Unmute. I wonder, does any of them have zap? If you look right there, a little word that says level is kind of scratched on mine for the Maracas Tamarine. No biggie though. My gear doesn't have to be visually perfect. Just awesome looking. And I believe this is doing the trick. Hold on one sec. There we go. Get some blinkiness. That's a pretty weird pattern. That must be using the uh, the off syncing or different ways to uh, mess with the timing. A lot of these uh, patterns are very hip hop related.
All right, let's get some lights back on. I can see what I'm doing. So yeah, let's see, uh, still haven't pulled up the rim and clavs, or the crash. So, kick one. Kick two. Snare. It's a very snappy snare, with lots of variation, but... I don't think you're going to be able to get out of having a very snappy snare. And I didn't really stop it, I just paused it. There we go. I'm seeing lots of variation. In the drum, in the uh, clap drum. Clap drum. There is no clap drum, it's just a it's just clap. Yeah, no clap drum, just clap. The rim isn't very convincing at all. That sounds more like a wood block than a rim. Something kind of similar to the uh, percussion sound from the from the Rhythm Wolf, for those who don't hate the Rhythm Wolf and have actually played with it. I actually like in the clav sound more and wish the tone knob was for the clav. But like I said, the hi-hats, See here. I guess you gotta pitch them a little different. Um, so far, I'm not crazy about them. They're very uh, grainy and sizzly, almost buzzy. Not crazy about that. The uh, toms, let's crank up the level. Even out the pitch. Very doopy. Not really much attack at all going on with this. And I understand with an analog drum machine, attack, you kind of have to add a little bit something extra, like a click or a pulse or something, to get much of an attack at all. That or a pitch envelope. But, uh, these are just kind of like dupes. Try the congas. To me, that just kind of sounds like the toms pitched up a couple octaves. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's a little something extra to it. Kind of a hollow-ish tone. I'm liking the congas. Not digging the toms, but I'm liking the congas. The crash, let's check out the crash. Let's get it longer. Typical synthesized crash symbol. Nothing like really explosive like a good heavy metal crash symbol, which you're probably not looking for a heavy metal crash cymbal if you're buying this drum machine, but hey, I like a little bit of everything. 808, 901, 9, Iron Maiden style crash cymbals, Pantera style crash cymbals. Not really into Dave Matthews style crash cymbals though. And 
nice variation. I like it better than the hi-hats. Just too buzzy. The tambourine maracas. Sounds like a maraca. Can't really tweak it at all. Tambourine. Sounds like a synthesized tambourine. It could be useful. I wish you could uh, pitch it a little bit. And the zap. It's kind of just another synthesized kick drum. Wish there was a little bit more control to this. Like, take this, move it up here or something. The whole logo and give them each an extra knob. That way you could have pitch for tambourine and a maybe a pitch decay for this pitch envelope decay because there's obviously some pitch envelope going on but the decay knob is only really doing anything about the amp decay so that's uh that's all the drums and you heard the metronome that was crazy the sequencer you get a uh, 64 steps in each pattern and I believe let's see pattern uh, let's see a uh, bank there we go you pick your bank and then you go to your pattern there's 64 patterns 64 steps and 64 of those 64 step patterns and apparently you have a song mode but I don't really mess with song mode too much let's see let's see if there's any patterns programmed here and there is Break it up to 170, we might have some drum and bass. Now let's uh, try some extremely lower. I think it sounds better faster. Swing is giving it some nice groove. I guess that's not doing anything if you don't have it programmed. All right, um, you know, first initial reactions, I think that's all I can really tell you without making this video two hours long. Um, don't worry, I'm going to take this thing off. Don't worry, I'm going to take it off. Um, for now, I think I'd like to go ahead and just shut this video down so I can start making some proper jams for y'all to listen to and check out this new drum machine. See if it's worth your time, worth your money, and worth your excitement. With all these uh, outputs back here, I think it's going to be worth my time and excitement. Especially once I start throwing some uh, Mografogers in there and start, you know, take this boring old zap sound, run it through like the freak box or something like that. Maybe take some, uh, some of these boring closed and open hi-hats, run it through the Murph. Who knows? I mean, I am a little disappointed that it is called the drum brute, yet there is no brute factor. But at the same time, I know I'm being hypocritical because the brute factor is one of my least favorite analog distortions I've played with on an analog synth in the last several years. So I guess it's an even trade off, and filters are fun, if not a, you know, a little overused. But still, they're fun, and that's the main thing. So this has been my unboxing and review of the Arturia drum boot <laughs> Arturia drum brute analog drum synthesizer so until next time keep making noise <laughs>